and welcome to the inaugural commencement exercises of Achievement First Brooklyn High School. School. Possible, our board of directors, our of course dedicated faculty and staff, past and present, who work tirelessly with our students, our honored guests, uh, Mr. Robert Granham, and last but definitely not least, I want to take a second to, to really recognize and welcome all of the extended family, friends who have dedicated time, energy, finances, support to really truly. Today we celebrate a huge accomplishment um, of our scholars and our families who between four and eight years ago entrusted their children in our care um, as they have gone through and accomplished the major milestone of completing their high school careers. In addition, we will reflect on the wonderful memories we've shared in the past four years, from reading mission statements at orientation, to lock-ins, to camping trips, to late nights with Ms. Lopez del Castillo in the lab, to detentions over time, suspensions, but most, most importantly, the poise and grace that you demonstrated through your eloquent speeches on Senior Signing Day, which truly captured and commemorated the amazing journeys each of you have taken. And finally, we do very much look ahead to the exciting journeys you have before you, that we very much look forward to hearing your exciting journeys in college. We actually very much look forward to the next milestone where you have your graduation from college and you are starting your journeys to really truly change the world. I want to officially welcome and kick off our commencement exercises. Congratulations to the class of 2013. Good evening, families, scholars, and friends. I said the same thing on signing day. I will say it again. You can look in every borough of this fine city, every city in this state, and every state in this country, and you will not find a prouder principal than the one that is standing right here before you today. What you are about to witness over the next hour will quite simply blow you away. And I challenge you, in fact, I dare you to not be inspired by what you will see. For what you will see is this, 32 out of 32 of our senior scholars being accepted to four-year colleges. And of those 32 scholars, they were accepted into a total 216 colleges, an average of 6.7 colleges per scholar. And of those 32 scholars, they've earned over a million dollars in grants and scholarships. That's an average of 30,000 per scholar that they earned with their hard work. And while this accomplishment is incredibly impressive, it is not shocking to me. Not shocking that given the past seven years, our scholars spent roughly 1.4 million more seconds, 240,000 more minutes, 4,000 more hours, and roughly 166 more days dedicated to their learning than almost any student in the schools around this area. They stayed late in the evenings. They came in on the weekends. They came in on the summer when they were tired, when they stressed, and they could only push a little bit more, but they pushed that much more. And it's not shocking that they've accomplished this. Given that they've worked towards more rigorous standards, AP tests, SAT exams, seminar, in more advanced courses with teachers who held them to much, much higher expectations. And it wasn't shocking, given the same high expectations at home, that their parents and, felt, and families held to them along the way, every single step of the way, pushing them and supporting them. But still, I dare you not to be inspired by the fact that with all these accomplishments, the content of their character here sh shines brightest. I dare you not to be inspired by the fact that they've served more than 2,400 hours of community service, leading hundreds of our middle schoolers and other families in need. They've rebuilt houses from New York City to Buffalo for the Habitat for Humanity project. They have mentored underclassmen, served as peer mediators, served on our honor council. They've started almost every student-based club in this school including GSA, sports teams, debate, so that every other student in the school that passed after them had those opportunities. And that during our signing day, one month ago, all 32 of these scholars stood up on a stage right where I'm standing right now and declared proudly their choice of college. 
And they did so in such a heartfelt, moving, and articulate way that the only thing you can hear in this room were the teardrops as we were moved beyond words. I challenge you to find a high school where every single senior is prepared to move hundreds and thousands with their words and with their presence, not just their accomplishments. And you know, the end of our mission statement, it reads like this, that our scholars will be prepared to be the next generation of leaders for their communities. And the reason I am the proudest principal in this country is because I don't need to travel to their colleges next Good evening, faculty, Mr. Adler, parents, families, Mr. Calvin Grenham, our keynote speaker, and most importantly, the graduating class of 2013. I would first like to start by saying that this is an extreme honor to be standing before you today. I would like to, I would like to ask the audience to give a round of applause to our graduating class. because we earned it. I would like to say thank you to my family for, for their continuous support of me, for continuously supporting me throughout my academic career. We love you. <laughs> I would also like to address the families of my peers today for raising such bright, smart, and funny future leaders. President, President Obama stated that change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. The word change is truly an amazing word. It means to shift from one position in life, transitioning into another. As I stand before you today, I see a room full of change, a room full of future leaders, and a room full of people standing, declaring that time for change. As we ascend from the arms that have protected us for so long, we have feelings of anxiousness and nervousness. Yet, we are excited, prepared scholars who are ready to tackle the task that life throws at us. Boys to Men said it is so hard to say goodbye to yesterday, but I believe that tomorrow leads to new opportunities, new chapters, and indescribable new experiences. During the Civil Rights Movement, Martin Luther King Jr. gave his life so that blacks would no longer have to be subjected to society's animalistic visions of how blacks should be treated. Malcolm X died because he told the truth. Emmett Till died because he whistled at a white woman. But they lost their lives because they saw fit for change. Rosa Parks would not give her per seat on a bus, Brown versus the Board of Education made it possible for blacks to gain an equal education. And Little Rock Nine defied the segregated South in pursuit of gaining a great education in a non-segregated school environment. Change is the word that stands behind these few leaders that I have listed. But the tangible leaders who sit in the audience class of 2013 are our parents, families, and teachers because they saw fit for change. They believe in you and I. They chose to send us to a school that has prepared us to go to college to become leaders, and to give back to those who so graciously gave to us. And for that, parents and families and teachers, we say thank you. Martin Luther King Jr. once said that the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. Dr. King, the, the challenge for Dr. King was an uphill battle that seemed almost impossible to overcome. But he stood with assurance that he was going to shift society's preconceived notions of what it means to be black. I realized that the man or woman who stays strong in the face of adversities, challenges, chaos, and controversies are like an oak tree, planted, steadfast, and immovable. For the class of 2013, many tears have fallen because the challenges often seem too great. There were many sleepless nights because the, because the class of 2013 chose to accept those challenges, the challenge of going to Achievement First Brooklyn High School. And many, we have many memories that will last a lifetime. Memories that will stand the test of time and that the class of 2000, 2013 will always remember are, are Marquis starting his own photography business with the business <laughs> like true images, or Lakeisha always having the class's best interest when it came to snacks. Woo! Will Brienne always willing to play devil's advocate when we debated, or will we rally like a quiet thunder around Dennis when he started the I Wild Watch him? <laughs> we will always remember David's yeah, yeah, yeah at the back of the classroom, 
and the early Saturday mornings that we endured in order to blow the SAT out of the park. But in spite of the moments that we cherish, we will always have moments along this journey called life that have beaten, broken, and torn the very things that we love away from us. Langston Hughes said it best, life ain't been no crystal stair. I was once told that my life was a blank sheet of paper, and all I could think was who was the, who was the writer, and what was this writer going to write about my life? I realized that the writer was me, that I have the ability to determine my life, my economic status, and where I end up in life. Dr. King once, once said, whatever it is you're going to become, be the best at it. If you're going to become a garbage man, be the best garbage man. To dream, dare, and do it. Don't ever let someone else tell you what you can't do. If you got a dream, you got to protect it. And if you know what you want to write, you got to go do it. I know as you sit here under the sound of my voice that some of you are saying, I haven't figured out what I want to do in college, let alone in life. But I want to let you know that whatever you do, that the worst thing in life someone can tell you is no. That you should not give up because someone has told you no. Because someone is always going to tell you yes. The words yes and no have no specific ties that are predicated to your success. And no, I'm not going to list famous people who have been told no once or twice because they, they made it. I want you to think back to February, March, and April when our acceptance letters began to come in. I want you to think about the anxiousness and nervousness that you felt. I want you to think, I want you to think about the school that you wanted to go to that didn't accept you. This is your moment to smile and laugh because someone did. And the schools that didn't accept us will never know what hardworking, determined, and courageous scholars we are. Class of 2013, we have cried together, lost members of our community, have battled the merit and demerit system, and struggled together. But in spite of the losses that we believe we have gained, we still showed up and conquered. No one, and I mean no one, can take away the love that we have for each other. If I haven't told you this before, I am telling you now. You guys are my family. Class of 2013, we did it. Thank you. Congratulate you. 
you should feel a sense of accomplishment for graduating from a very rigorous high school. You should feel prepared to be successful in college and in life. It is equally impressive that each of you will be attending college. There are few graduating classes in the country that can claim that every single graduate is going to a four-year college. Being, being a member of the first class to graduate from Achievement First Brooklyn High School is also a distinction you will cherish for the rest of your life. Now all of you must set the path for future graduates by graduating from college in four years. That's an applause line. You're supposed to clap for that. <laughs> four years. Four, four, four. So now let's turn to why you should feel confident and encouraged as you move forward in life. Uh, to the extent that I speak about myself or my experiences or my friends' experiences, it's because I expect each of you to use me as a reference point and exceed what I have accomplished. I want to back up and say, um, Michael George, you did a great job. <laughs> Matter of fact, you're a little intimidating, and I've been, I've been practicing law and doing all kinds of things, and I'm like, that, that guy, I, I don't know, he's pretty good. Very good. So, graduating class, you did a good job of electing your speaker, but I have, a, I have a sense that any of you probably could have gotten up here and done an excellent job. So, I want you to use me as a reference point, because I, I, I seriously expect that each of you will exceed whatever I have accomplished. We didn't go into a whole lot of what I've done, and a lot of that stuff is on the web, so if you're interested, you can go there and see it. But like you, I was raised in central Brooklyn, and my neighborhood is on the border of Fort Greene and Bed-Stuy. It's called Clinton Hill, but when I grew up, it wasn't called Clinton Hill. It was called the border of Fort Green and Bedside. <laughs> and uh, people considered it to be kind of rough. And like many of you, I am the child of immigrants. Both my parents came to this country from Barbados when they were in their 20s. And like many of you, um, I was the first person in my immediate family to graduate from high school and go off to college. I have been fortunate to fashion, and like Robert said, create a very productive career with the assistance of my family and many people. Right? And I want to come back to you. And like many of you, my parents were highly committed to me and had high expectations for my brother and me. So I want to tell you a story. You heard I went to the University of Pennsylvania, and you heard I went to Georgetown Law School. Well, um, it wasn't smooth sailing at all, right? Um, because you're going to go to some places that are very competitive. And like you, everybody's going to be smart and tough and think they're number one. And you might be, but there are going to be some challenges along the way. So I graduated from the University of Pennsylvania. I started my first year at Georgetown Law Center, and I couldn't believe how smart the people were. It seemed like they were reading three times faster than I was. It, it was, I was like, whoa. And I had just graduated from my early school. So after the first round of tests, um, I, even before, I think I took one test, and I said, this ain't going to work. <laughs> so I called my dad. And I, um, now mind you, my father came here from Barbados. He went to the fifth grade. He had three jobs. He owned real estate. He worked all the time, right? 
So he kind of pulled himself up by his bootstrap. So I'm calling him, you know, and I say to him, Dad, your jig is up. <laughs> and he says, what? I said, the jig is up. And there was a pause. And I realized he doesn't know what the jig is up for. That's right. I said, I said, Dad, I'm not going to make it. He said, what did you say? I said, I am not going to make it through law school. And then there was silence. And it felt like an eternity. He didn't say anything. And then he said to me, well, just let me understand something. I said, yes, Dad. And I was crying. And he says, uh, do you have pencils? And I said, wait, let me ask you, do you have pencils? <laughs> and he says, do you have paper? I said, yes, I have pencils and I have paper. What have I got to do with it? He says, do you have the books that they told you to buy? And I said, yes, I have all the books. And then there was another long pause. Then he said, well, I really don't see what the problem is. <laughs> and then I really stopped crying. And I hung up the phone. Before I hung up the phone, I said, thank you, Dad. I went back to study. And I graduated. Now, why do I tell you that story? Because for me, this story is a classic example of hope, expectation, and desire that many people hold for you. But between the lines, what I heard my father said to me, say to me, was if I was, if I were in your position, I would be out doing all I could to graduate, and I would have no excuses. In high school, college, and law school, I wasn't the smartest student, that's obvious. But I knew that if I committed myself fully to a task or a goal, I would almost certainly succeed. And my father's comments to me kind of reinforced that. It gave me some energy. It re-inspired me. I also knew that my parents, my teachers, and even my peers expected nothing less than 100% from me. They expected me to be resilient, they expected to be me to be tough, and they expected me to be courageous. Perseverance and focused investment of time is critical to building knowledge, skills, and long-term success. I encourage each of you, if you haven't already, and I get a sense that maybe some of you have, I encourage you to read a book called Outliers, The Story of Success by Malcolm Gladwell. In Outliers, Gladwell examines the factors that contribute to high levels of success. Using Bill Gates of Microsoft and the Beatles musical group and others, Gladwell emphasizes that the 10 emphasizes the 10,000 hour rule, which urges that the key to success in any field is to a large extent a matter of practicing a specific task for a total of 10,000 hours or more or more. It sounds like you guys spend a whole lot of time, also, more time than the ordinary student. I mean, you and yourselves might be outliers in that respect. I don't expect you to take this theory of 10,000 hours as gospel, but I would hope that you would examine and test it against your experience and those of others. Another idea I would encourage you to test is that the universe was created to support each of you in achieving success. I'll say that again. That the universe was created to support each of you in achieving success. There is a lot of philosophical and religious literature supporting this principle. Adopt the attitude and the deep belief that all people around you are eager to see you succeed and will support you in doing so if you ask them to and demonstrate your commitment. Teachers, professors, coaches, neighbors, employers are all willing to mention you. This has been my experience since I was a little boy and remains so today. I will not give you examples from my life, but I assure you there are many. And I encourage you to examine your own life. Examine your own life to determine whether people have 
responded to your request for support positively. Examine your own life, read biographies of successful people, and make inquiry of people that you know in order to test the principle that the universe was created to support you in achieving success. So what do I want you to do? I want you to be grateful and thankful. I want you to be confident, proud, but not boastful. I want you to be 100% committed to your studies and success. Engage others to assist you and help you. Enjoy life and think abundance. I'm going to say it again. Think abundance. In closing, I would like to read to you a quote from Creating Affluence, Wealth Consciousness in the Field of All Possibilities by Dr. Deepak Chopra. Once upon a time in a faraway land, a young man went to the forest and said to his spiritual master, I want to have unlimited wealth, and with that unlimited wealth, I want to help and heal the world. Will you please tell me the secret to creating affluence? And the spiritual master replied, there are two goddesses that reside in the heart of every human being. Everybody is deeply in love with these supreme beings. There is a certain secret that you, do, that you need to know, and I will tell you what it is. Although you love both goddesses, you must pay more attention to one of them. She is the goddess of knowledge, and her name is Saravasti. Pursue her, love her, give her your attention. The other goddess, whose name is Lakshmi, is the goddess of wealth. When you pay more attention to Saravasti, Lakshmi will become extremely jealous and pay more attention to you. The more you seek the goddess of knowledge, the more the goddess of wealth will seek you. She will follow you wherever you go and never leave you, and the wealth you desire will be yours forever. There is power in knowledge, desire, and spirit. And this power within you is the key to creating affluence and abundance for yourself and others. Congratulations to all the parents, to all the grandparents, to all the caregivers, students, and teachers.